Right here, he's really thinking about coming to get some hay. You see him reach out with his nose. He actually takes a couple of steps, reaches out really far with his neck, and takes his first bite of hay from me. Throughout this series, I'll be sharing the major principles that I use throughout my horse training processes. A principle is essentially just a rule that you can take and apply in many different situations to find success in your horse training endeavors. The first principle I'm going to teach you about is establishing and maintaining care for your horse. And by care, I don't mean the simple feeding, trimming of the hooves, and vet care of your horse. No, we're talking on a deeper level. By care, I'm referring to one of the major emotional systems discovered by Jack Pangsep starting in the 1960s when he charted seven networks of emotion that are present in every mammal's brain. This means that humans and horses' emotional systems are the same. This research proves that it's not even a question whether horses do or do not experience emotion. Now, horses don't experience the same thought patterns and perspectives and opinions of their emotions like humans do because we possess a much larger prefrontal cortex than the horse does. Horses are completely honest with their emotions, both with themselves and with what they show to us. So we need to remember that a horse is never scheming and trying to be bad or trying to do these things. They're simply expressing their emotion through their body's movement. Okay, now back to care. What exactly is the emotional system of care? Love, concern, effort and exertion, regard, enthusiasm, trust, interest, these are all aspects of the emotional system of care. If a horse has never experienced care from a human in their lifetime, they have likely never felt truly safe with humans. For us, as their riders and handlers, this can be dangerous. So this principle of care is overall probably the most important principle that we're going to discuss throughout this entire series. Once we as the human put ourselves out there and let the horse know in many of the ways that will be discussed later in this video that we care for them, not in the physical sense, but in the emotional sense that we've just discussed, then they will relax around us. They'll be more confident. They'll be more comfortable. They'll be more willing to do things. They won't be worried about our intentions. And then they can actually begin to truly and genuinely care about us in return. And how cool is that? That across species, we can care for each other and reciprocate that care back and forth between species, even though we don't communicate in the same way, we don't think in the same way, and we don't even see, hear, or perceive the world in the same way. To start off building this feeling of care within Sundancer, all I'm doing is sitting in his pen while he eats some hay. I'm not moving, I'm not talking to him, I'm just quietly sitting there, focusing on my breathing and trying not to think as much as possible while he just gets to eat hay. This is allowing him to associate the hay with me it's teaching him that he can approach me safely. I'm not going to jump up and attack him or anything crazy like that. He's safe around me. He can just calmly enjoy his hay and once he's done, I'm just gonna leave him alone. This is a fantastic practice to do with your horses you've had for years or especially with any horse that is new to you or one that may be difficult to work with or a wild Mustang. It even works with them. This principle of care, like I said, is universal. And so teaching the horse that we care about them in an abundance of little ways like this 
makes more of a difference in the horse and in our training than any training aid or any training drill that we could possibly think of. Over the next few days, I'm gonna be repeating this process and I'll just be moving the hay a little bit closer to me each time, but still not moving, still not messing with him, just allowing him to be at peace near me. Now I'm going to be moving into doing some actual exercises with Sundancer. Before I start my sessions, I always like to sit down so that I can breathe, slow my breath, and set an intention for the training session. Now I want to note that an intention is not a goal that you feel that you must reach, but rather it's a hope for the tone or the mood of the session. So for this session, my intention was that Sundancer let his guard down and become even more relaxed in my presence and possibly even allow me to hand feed him some hay. Now it's very important when we're working with horses and especially wild mustangs that we are completely present while we're working with them. Our mind isn't running off and doing other things. We're completely focused. And once we're present and our breath is slow, it's time to start on the first exercise. I like to call this exercise, I notice. All I'm gonna be doing for this exercise is walking in an arc around the pen. And each time Sundancer looks at me, I'm going to turn around. Now this may seem strange, especially if you originally come from a traditional horsemanship background, but what this does is it tells Sundancer, hey, I notice you. I know when you're looking at me, so I pay attention to you. And it's showing him that I notice the things that he does. This is extremely important for a horse because in a herd, they all must notice each other and be present and aware enough to notice any danger that could be in the distance. So by saying to Sundancer, I notice you, we're also saying, I'm aware and I can keep you safe. You can even try this little exercise with horses that are hard to catch or maybe that you need to connect with a little bit more out in the pasture. And you'll find that if you do it long enough or you repeat this process over several days, eventually the already domestic horses will just actually come up to you because they get curious about you because you've been telling them over and over, hey, I see you, hey, I see you, hey, I see you. And they really begin to feel that sense of care that we discussed earlier and that we'll be continuing to discuss throughout this video. The next thing that I'm going to be doing with Sundancer is letting him know that I notice and I see when he feels stressed and that I respect any boundaries that he gives me. Respect is a term that we often hear in traditional horsemanship and it's usually used in the sense that the horse needs to respect us. However, the horse's brain doesn't possess the capabilities to understand the human term respect, much less how to implement that with a human. And so that is not what I mean by respect. When I talk about respecting his boundaries, that means that as I'm trying to approach, like you see in this clip here, if he shows me any stress indicators that say, hey, I'm not really comfortable with you coming any further, or hey, I'm getting worried about you, then I'm going to immediately stop moving towards him. And this lets him know that I'm never going to hurt him, that I can see when he's feeling stressed, and it lets him know that, once again, I am paying attention to him to the extent where I can notice if just his eyes flick away from me and respond accordingly. So if you're doing this exercise, it's extremely important to understand what stress indicators are. Stress indicators consist of the horse turning its eyes and head away from you, shifting their weight away from you, perking their ears up where they're very stiff and not moving, getting wide-eyed, ceasing to blink or breathe, a loud snort, 
All of those things indicate that your horse is feeling some level of stress. More anxious horses will typically have larger stress indicators much more quickly, but more relaxed horses, such as Sundancer, might just have a small cue that they give you to say that they are stressed. For example, Sundancer, you can't hardly tell in this video, but as I approach him, I see his eyeballs just turn away from me slightly, and I respond accordingly by stopping or backing up if he feels the need to get away from me, I am the one to move away from him, showing that I will respect those boundaries and I'm never going to do anything to purposely make him uncomfortable. The slightest stress indicator you can respond to, the better and the more your horse is going to realize that you're looking out for their safety and their best interest and you're not going to put them in any kind of situation that makes them feel extremely unsafe. This is a wild, untouched Mustang, even though he has a more calm demeanor. If I were to just march up to him right now and try and touch him, he would freak out because he wouldn't know what my intentions are. And I am still scary to him at this point. So doing that would tremendously damage his view of humans and his association with humans and would begin to associate me and other humans with negative circumstances and stress instead of associating them with good positive things like me noticing him, me respecting his boundaries, me feeding him hay, him eating hay by me. These are all positive things and we want to make sure that we keep the horse's experience with us as positive as possible, especially in the beginning and especially with a wild Mustang. And now that I have practiced this approach and retreat by responding to his stress indicators and respecting his boundaries, I'm close enough that I can gather up some hay out of my bag here and hand it out to him and see if he will be brave enough to take some hay from my hand. This is the first step in making friends with this Mustang. Now that I've shown him I notice him, we're ready to begin making true connection. Just a little later in the session, you can already see how much more relaxed Sundancer is feeling than he was just in the previous clip. Right there, he showed me a stress indicator, so I backed up one step, and then he immediately starts licking and chewing and lowering his head, telling us that he is returning to the parasympathetic rest and digest nervous system state from a sympathetic, slightly stressed slightly worried about me sympathetic state. Calming signals are extremely important to understand in addition to stress signals and we'll be covering both more in depth a little bit later in the series. By this point in the session, Sundancer is starting to realize that I'm respecting his boundaries and that I'm not going to approach him if he doesn't allow it. And you see him stare at me for a prolonged amount of time right there. That means he's thinking about coming over. He's curious about me. He's wondering, hmm, what's up with this human? Usually they just ignore me and do whatever they want, run me around and approach me as close as they feel like, but this one's different. You can use this approach and retreat method with literally any horse and it will instantly have them interested in you and thinking about you. Now I say instantly, however, with a shutdown horse, it might take longer for them to acknowledge this, but you see how quickly this wild Mustang is interested in me due to the fact that I've been approaching and retreating in this manner and paying attention to all of his stress indicators. Right here, he's really thinking about coming to get some hay. You see him reach out with his nose. He actually takes a couple of steps, reaches out really far with his neck, and takes his first bite of hay from me. This is a huge win. He just tested himself. He, he had to be brave in order to approach me and take this hay from me, but he did it. And now he's being rewarded with a nice tasty snack. I just adore this calm and nice and kind method of creating the feeling of care between a horse and a human. It doesn't involve any lunging. It doesn't involve any tiring the horse out so that you can approach. It doesn't involve any 
putting pressure on them on the outside of the round pin only to release the pressure if they decide to come near you or face you. All of this is totally voluntary. I 100% stand by the fact that starting your horses like this is going to end up with a better horse every single time rather than chasing them around, tiring them out, letting them drag a halter, and all things like that because we are building positive foundations and that is the most important part of creating this partnership between you and your horse. I want to note here that this is the first day that I've really worked with him other than sitting by him, uh, letting him eat hay next to me. And with that being said, I am not looking at this horse in his eyes. Looking at horses in their eyes can be really intimidating for domestic horses and so even more so for the wild ones. Um, it's something that predators do. Horses typically don't look at each other right in the eyes. So I'm kind of looking down and looking at him out the corner of my eye, showing that I am not a threat and that I'm just here to feed him handfuls of hay. I'm also making sure that I approach Sundancer from the front. If I were to try and approach him behind his drive line, I would ultimately be driving him away from me instead of inviting him to come towards me. Also, if at any point he wants to walk off, he completely can and I'm not going to follow him or pressure him to take the hay from me. It needs to be his choice. This is a clip from our second session. I'll be doing the same approach and retreat method for a couple of days with this guy. And once he's comfortable, I'll just be standing next to him feeding him hay. So stay tuned to see that whole process. The next video will be released on Saturday, so stay tuned. So as you can see in the second session, he immediately takes some hay from my hand. He knows what's up. He knows I'm not gonna hurt him. He remembers, oh yeah, I did this yesterday and it was totally fine. She didn't hurt me. She respected my boundaries. She is starting to establish a little bit of care with me, though I'm still pretty uneasy about her. I think I can trust her enough to take some hay from her hand. And so he does. And this might not seem like much, guys, but this is the beginning. This is the very beginning. This is the foundation of a beautiful relationship right here. As I said before, a more anxious Mustang might take longer to get to this point. However, just like us, each horse is an individual. They're all going to be different. This guy is smooth sailing right now, but we might come into a hiccup later on in his training, whereas my husband's Mustang is taking a little bit longer to feel comfortable being around him or eating out of his hand, but his training might go smoother later on while it's a little bumpy right now. So remember, 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 please, you can't have any expectations. Just take what you get each day Go out there every day with a good intention and high hopes, but don't be disappointed if your horse doesn't start eating out of your hand on session two. This guy is very calm, so he is definitely an anomaly, but he'll be a great one for me to really show you guys the process with in depth throughout this series. So as you can see right here, he got a little bit nervous. He was like, oh wait, I've been taking a lot of hay from her. Am I sure this is okay? So he walks off, repositions himself, it takes a moment, but then, once again, he does take the hay from me. He's already starting to get more comfortable with humans, and that is a big win.